Welcome to Print on Demand, How to Self-Publish Your Book. Um, we're here for a couple of hours today talking about print on demand, self-publishing, um, doing your own thing, avoiding the publishers who take forever to get your book out there, and then once they get it out there, seem to stop promoting it. I have published 10 books. Um, we're not going to talk about the sort of high-end technical aspects of using print on demand. This is really a primer or an over overview workshop. So the workshop object objectives, I'm going to define print on demand for you so that we've all got the common denominator. Uh, we're going to look at print on demand versus vanity publishing, which is a fading industry, although there's now what I call the print on demand or vanity print on demand, where they try to make a whole lot of money uh, from you. Uh, we're going to talk about the importance of targeting your audience before you write. This is not a writing workshop, but I do want to look at this one aspect of knowing who you're writing for. Then we're going to look at print-on-demand companies and options. Uh, we'll look at ISBN numbers, how to get them, the technical tools you need to self-publish, and an overview of book marketing options. Uh, print-on-demand, so what is it? It's a process by which copies of books or other documents are printed once an order has been placed by the readers or the authors. So literally, you as the author place an order for your book, for one book, for 10 books. You know, if you're doing a workshop, you need 25 books. You don't have to carry inventory. Also, your books, depending on the print-on-demand company you use, might be available through Amazon, through chapters, through your website. So the book doesn't get printed until somebody orders the book. So no inventory, which is really great. So you can use print-on-demand to publish almost anything you write. And I put almost in italics. Uh, for a reason. Print on demand companies don't care about content, quality, accuracy. They don't care. They make money when you sell a book. So they don't care what the content is. They don't care about grammar and spelling. Publishers will be concerned about things like that. Print on demand companies don't care about design other than your cover and the interior of your book have to meet their technical specs. Uh, that are required for printing purposes. And we'll come back and, and talk about that. So you're not working with a publisher or a business partner. You're working with a company that makes money when you sell books. And all they're concerned about is the sales of the books. Okay, So make sure you understand that. You're responsible. Depending on the company you use with print on demand, you can get your book into Amazon and maybe even chapters. Uh, my, book is, my books are in Amazon.com and .ca, uh, Barnes & Noble, W.H. Smith, and I haven't done anything. I just picked the print-on-demand company that works with these book resellers. Bang, my books are automatically online in the websites of book resellers. And uh, I've <laughs> sold some of my books um, in London, in England, uh, several hundred copies of one book in particular called How to Write a Nonfiction Book in 60 Days. And I have done nothing, no, no promotion, no publicity. Because when you're in a retailer, imagine if you go to Amazon and you're thinking, gee, I want a book on print on demand. So you go to Amazon and you type in print on demand in the search and then you look at the books. So people are going to book site uh, websites typing in how to write a nonfiction book, seeing my book, reading about me, maybe going to my website and saying, yeah, this book looks cool. I think, you know, and it's affordable, 15 bucks, I'll buy it. So I, I have several books on writing. What a surprise. I'm a writer, so I write about writing. One is called How to Write a Nonfiction Book in 60 Days. Now, that's very different from Rediscover the Joy of Creative Writing. So the genre is a self-help book on writing but the title helps me define the book. So as I said earlier, when people are going to um, Google or if they're actually on book retailer websites, and if they type in creative writing, my book shows up, Discover, Rediscover the Joy of Creative Writing. If they type in writing a nonfiction book, my book shows up. So the definition, when you're defining your genre and your audience, also you want to use your titles so that they're search friendly. Because if I say in my How to Write a Nonfiction Book in 60 Days, entitled that, make a whole lot of money writing, the wrong people would find it. Or people would find it and say, no, that's not what I want. You know, I want nonfiction book, or I don't understand what this is about. Or somebody who had the word nonfiction in their title would come up higher in the search engines and the searches on websites. 
So define your genre, define your target market, and make sure your book title reflects your audience. Factors that dictate price, the length of your book, because you're paying, the more pages, the more you're paying for the book to be printed. Um, I believe that the value of your book, i.e. business books that will bring value, uh, self-help books that will help people accomplish things that they really want to, those books should be priced a little higher than, say, fiction or poetry books. Uh, people are more cost sensitive about fiction and poetry. You know, yes, this is entertainment, but gee, it's uh, $22. If it was 1995, I'd buy it. People are making more psychological decisions based on price around pick fiction and uh, poetry. Now, what's really interesting, and we are going to talk a little bit about Kindle. There are people publishing Kindle books for 99 cents. People say, 99 cents, people will buy it. They'll say, well, if I learn one thing, it's worth 99 cents. You know? So we'll talk a little bit about how eBooks and Kindle has influenced uh, pricing. So there's a large list of print-on-demand companies out there. Investigate them. I am going to name three. Um, if you're really serious about print-on-demand, one of the companies I name will be the company that I'm going to say you should use. But you don't have to use it. So investigate the companies. Look at what they're offering you. Um, you know, what's it cost? Where do they distribute the books? Do they get the books into Amazon? Very few companies will get your books into chapters. A lot of them will get into Amazon, .com, .ca. But what about Barnes & Noble? What about WH Smith? What about the e-books? Do they give you an e-book option? So these are questions you should ask. What's it going to cost? Where do they distribute the book? And um, what formats do they distribute the book in? Most companies, it's print or PDF. Some companies will distribute for Kindle, but you have to do certain things or distribute in a format called EPUB, which Chapters uses, but you have to do certain things. And we will come back and talk about that as well. When you use a print-on-demand company, you retain copyright. It's yours. So yes, you can use two companies, three companies for the same book. Um, How to Write a Nonfiction Book in 60 Days was originally published through Lulu. Um, and again, I'll tell you a little bit more about Lulu. Uh, it's now published through Lightning Source, Inc. But I didn't take it off Lulu. I really like Lulu the way they make the PDFs available. So when you go to my website, you'll see a link not to Lightning Source, they don't give you links, but to Amazon and Chapters, but those are books that Lightning Source distributes. You'll see a link to Lulu, and you'll see a link to the ebook on Lulu. So um, you can use multiple options because you own copyright, and then on your website, you can direct people to their options so they can choose. I'll buy this book in Canadian funds. I'll buy print copy in Canadian, print copy in American, PDF in Canadian funds, PDF in... Um, in US funds, or it's now available through Kindle, I'll buy the Kindle copy in American funds. You know, so the more options you give people, the more likely you are to sell the book. The big leagues of, sorry, print on demand companies and options, the big le leagues of print on demand, Lightning Source Inc. Lightning Source is a division of Ingram. Ingram is the world's largest book distributor. Okay? So when you're publishing your book with Lightning Source, you've got the distribution of Ingram backing you up. So literally, any bookstore in the world that uses Ingram, and they almost all do, can get a copy of your book. When I use Lightning Source, the books are available in Ingram's catalogs. Bookstores can order them and sell them. They automatically go into Amazon. Uh, chapters can pick it up, chapters.ca, chapters indigo, and that. So there's a lot of reasons for using Lightning Source. As I said, the books are available to bookstores through Ingram, which means any bookstore can go online and order your book through the Ingram catalog. So if you have a local bookstore that wants to carry your book, you don't have to get a whole bunch of copies printed up and sell it to them. You don't have to sell on consignment. Here, I'll give you 20 books. If you sell them, you give me the money. If you don't, you give me the books back. You don't need that. You can go in with one copy of the book and say, hey, I'm a local author. I'm going to be doing some promotion. People will be coming in asking for this book or maybe arrange to do a reading with them. And they can go to Ingram and they can print 
and get five copies, 10 copies delivered. As I said, it's cheaper to publish 5,000 copies of your book per book, but then you have all that inventory. The bookstore can buy your book using print-on-demand, and the print-on-demand company makes money. You make company when the bookstore orders it, and the bookstore makes money when they sell it. And they can buy three copies. If it sells, they can order three more or 10 more if it's selling well. You know, so uh, it's a great way to get your books into bookstore. And your books are available to you as the author at wholesale prices. So your book may retail for $24.95, but if it costs $7 to print, you'll pay $7, maybe a markup, so $9 plus shipping. If you order 10 books, you, know, you might end up paying $10 or $12 for your book, which you sell for $24.95. So I don't know who's got a calculator. You know, you're making like 12 bucks or almost 13 bucks on a book. You can view your sales right on, on LSI and you get your payments every quarter. Before we talk about Lulu, I just want to uh, let you know where the workshop's going to go. We're going to talk about Lulu, which is a print-on-demand company. We're going to talk about um, iUniverse, which I call a V POD company or vanity print-on-demand company. We're going to talk about some of the technology, and we're going to talk about marketing, just so you have a sense of, of where we're going from here.